Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on families and households, focusing on the ideas of GP Murdoch on the family. Often associated with the functionist perspective, George Peter Murdoch was a social anthropologist who in the 1940s conducted cross-cultural research into 250 different societies, from small hunter-gatherer tribes to urbanised populations. He found that in each of these societies, the family was a prominent institution, which led him to declare that the family unit was universal, it existed in all societies. He also found that in each of the societies he studied, there was a core family type from which other family types were developed. The core family was a male, a female and their children, and while many societies had extensions of this family, grandparents living with the family, cousins, aunts, uncles, what we might call the extended family, the most common type was what Murdoch referred to as the nuclear family. This existed in all of the societies he researched, and Murdoch found that they were functionally important. In other words, they provided clear functions for the members of the family and for wider society. Murdoch identified four distinct functions of the family across the different cultures he studied. Firstly, an economic function, providing resources for the family. Secondly, a sexual function, or regulation of sexual activities. A third function was education, primarily into the norms and values of society, what we may consider to be primary socialisation. And finally, the family performs the function of reproduction, of producing the next generation of society. But how does the family perform these functions? We'll look at these functions individually and analyse the process of the family performing these functions. Firstly, let's look at the economic function. One aspect of this in early industrial society is that the male works in exchange for wages, which are then used to purchase goods. Of course, in contemporary society, this economic function is not gender specific, nor is it limited to one worker, with dual earner families commonplace. However, the primary breadwinner being male was the social norm at the time of Murdoch's research, and it was his labour that earned money to purchase food, clothing and pay for shelter for his family. However, females also contributed towards the economic function of the family, albeit unpaid, with domestic labour contributing towards a smooth running of the household and wider society. The fact that it was not recognised as being worthy of wages is a criticism that the likes of Delphi and Leonard have le levelled at some functionalist explanations of family roles, stating that the organisation of the family is patriarchal in nature. The second function that requires development is that of sexual regulation. Now there are a number of aspects to how family units can regulate sexual activity in the family. The first of these is by having a healthy sexual relationship within a marriage. Males and females could satisfy their sexual urges without the need for committing deviant sexual activities such as adultery or incest. The family also regulates sexual behaviour in other ways, by promoting heterosexuality as a norm. This ensures the reproduction of the next generation of society. And despite this leading to criticisms of homosexuality being promoted as a form of deviant sexual behaviour at this time, we have to remember the norms and values of when Murdoch was writing, and perhaps use this as a form of evaluation. A final process linked into sexual regulation is the role of gender socialisation. Male and female children were socialised by their same-sex parent into gender-appropriate behaviours that will prepare them for adult life. In contemporary society, this idea is open to criticism, with lone parent families and changing attitudes to gender socialisation not fitting with the ideas of Murdoch. The third function outlined by Murdoch is that of education. Now this refers to the socialisation by the family of their children and is similar to the concept of primary socialisation discussed by Parsons. Children are taught the norms and values of the society they live in by their parents. They are told what are acceptable behaviours in social situations, their language and how to use it appropriately in a given situation. They are also taught values such as hard work and given goals that are socially approved. This will also relate to gender appropriate behaviours with modelling their same sex parent. This ensures the reproduction of society's norms and values from one generation to the next and enables children to grow up and fit into society and be able to contribute to the harmonious functioning of wider society. Although critics would suggest that socialising children into the same norms and values that their parents hold could lead to the stagnation of society. Whilst Marxists suggest that blind obedience to society's norms and values does not challenge the source of these values in the first place. Whose values are they? And what is the impact on children learning them? 
Finally, reproduction. Men and women reproduce and have children, and these children take their place as the next generation of society. But this is controlled to an extent by the family. Gender socialisation prepares children for reproduction in later life, promoting socially acceptable behaviours that allow them to reproduce once they're in a stable heterosexual relationship. Of course, critics would suggest that in contemporary society, heterosexuality is one of a range of sexualities that exist. But for functionalists, sexuality serves the purpose of reproducing the next generation and hence the promotion of heterosexual behaviours. Without this, society would stagnate and as the population ages, this places additional strain on the elder members of society to continue working, as we've seen in contemporary society with changes to the age at which people can collect their pensions. There are lots of critics of Murdoch's work. Feminists argue that the nuclear family is not the most universal unit, but rather a mother and child is. Families can and do exist without the biological father, particularly lone parents and reconstituted families. However, a counter-criticism of this would be that the increasing number of male-headed lone parent families as society has moved on. Marxists would also be critical, suggesting that Murdoch ignores the influence of capitalism. The next generation of society is also the next generation of workers, and Marxists suggest that the family indoctrinates children into capitalist ideologies such as hard work, spending money, and responsibility for their families through primary socialisation in an attempt to stop them challenging the ruling classes. A final evaluation is that Murdoch's research was published over 70 years ago, and as such fails to acknowledge the change in gender roles in society, as well as the greater diversity of family life. It also fails to acknowledge very contemporary issues such as gender transitions and their role in the functioning of family units. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on families and households looking at Murdoch's views of the family. Thanks for watching.